Today we will take a detailed look at the ACT 1200 wireless outdoor access point. This Wi-Fi access point is dual band so its Wi-Fi works very well over long distances. And here automatically the channel which will work best is set up by this router itself so that the clients with this router can transfer data very well. It is also possible to use POS switches to connect multiple access points together and control them remotely. There are also many other options that we will now try to see on screen. You need to log in to the control panel of the router through a specific IP number. After login to the access point router, you will see a status window like this. This router has a nice system to see the status of each option separately. First of all, it is seen whether the router is connected to the internet. That option is right in front of the status. After that, from the option name difference, you can see which device is connected to which signal of your Wi-Fi signal. After that, the option you see is called Lane, and through this lane, you can see which upline you are connected to and how many submit marks you have. This next option is provided to show the wireless 2.4G and wireless 5G status from where you can see your wireless signal name. How many people are connected to the wireless signal and which channel the wireless signal will connect to your mobile or your devices. In the next option, you can know your router or device firmware information, and at the top, you can see the connection status of your router. Where the icon indicates whether your access point is properly connected to the router and whether your wireless connections are working properly. In the next option, you can see your router's 2 and 5G bandwidth usage information. So let's take a look at the router setting options. In that case, we'll go to the Quick Setup and from there, we'll start the setting. Inside the Quick Setup, the first four options we see are Wireless Router, followed by Wireless Access Point, followed by Wireless Extender, and lastly, WRSP. Although this router or this access point has four options, we will basically configure it as a Wireless Access Point today. To configure the Wireless Access Point, First, you need to select the wireless access point and click the next option. In the next option, we can see that we have to select the time zone. In that case, I am for Dhaka time, so I will select the Dhaka time zone. In this case, you have to select the time zone of the country you are in, or your access point may not work properly. Since we will configure this router as an access point, we must connect this router to the mother to via cable. We could also connect it wirelessly. But in this case, we will connect via cab, as the connection is much more stable by connecting only via... In this case, we will connect a straight direct cable from the router to our access point. I found this router or access point to be very easy to set up, because its user interface is so flexible with us that we can easily configure it. As here, after a few simple steps, we can complete this configuration, as you can see, here we need to enter the numbers of Wallace signal and password. As this router is dual band, so here we need to create two signal names, two GRs and five GRs and separate passwords for the two signals. And then we need to click next. Here if we come inside the general settings there, but we will again enter inside the more detailed settings of the wireless signal. And in this case, we will have the opportunity to configure in more detail from the wireless signal. In that case, we can give more detailed values about mood, channel width, and transmission power. These are very important for advanced networking and building a good network. And the next option is very important for this access point. You can see the name of the next option is advanced setting above, where there are many other necessary options, including LAN, WPs, Wi-Fi schedule, etc. Through the LAN option, we can configure this access point with a static IP, which will be much more convenient when we try to do remote access, or we can determine which IPTIS access point is connected to. This next option is Wake on LAN. I'm totally clueless about this option, as I've never used it before, or I've no idea how it works. But if any of you have an idea, please comment. The next option is WPs and Wi-Fi schedule. Wi-Fi schedule, in most routers, it is through which we get a pin, and through that pin we can log into the router and through Wi-Fi schedule. You can turn your router on and off in a schedule time, like if you in case of a university configuration. Configuring it with university time 
will automatically shut down the routers when the university closes. The next options we usually see in all routers are time zone firmware update backup and restore admin account language time. Report normal report and reset there, we see that firmware update is a necessary thing where updating your router firmware is very important from time to time. Backup and restore option is a very important option because in many cases we need to do settings again after updating the firmware. In that case, if you keep the backup then you don't need to do those settings again if you just upload the restore file. Your work will be done. If your router is placed in a public place, such as a hotspot or used for other purposes, you should definitely change the password of the admin account to improve the security of your network. Now we can see the language option of this router where auto is given. Apart from auto, this router has different language options. If you want your mother language here, you can convert it to that language. It will be more convenient for you to configure and maintain. The next option we can see is the time reboot. This is a very necessary option. Sometimes our router hangs or becomes weak for a long time. If you look at a daily scheduled time reboot, the router can be restarted again and bandwidth service will be very smooth. Looking at the next option, we can see reboot. This option can be rebooted from this option of your router without unplugging the router. The next option we can see is reset. The reset option is in many cases such that if the router is moved from your placement point or placed in another network, the router needs to be completely reset because its credentials need to be set up anew. The next option we can see is called Diagnostic Tools. And here we can see many types of diagnostic tools like Diagnostic PIN, Traceroute, NS Lookup System Log to use these types of options. There were no such detailed options or modules in the router or any type of router before, or I did not see it in this case. I want to give a shout out to this company. Otherwise, we would have to rely on a computer to use such tools, and in that case, we would have to use the DOS command to access such tools. Overall, I like this router very much especially because the user interface of the router is very good and very simple, and it is very easy to connect this router without a network person to configure or do advanced networking tasks. Finally, if this video is of any use to you, or if this video is of any use to you, it is requested to leave a like or subscribe after watching this video, because such videos are constantly appearing on our channel, maybe through this channel in the future. If you think it may be of any use to you, you are specifically requested to subscribe.